Yo, what up? Recently, ROM hack creator DanGPTV created Shotgun Mario 64, where he went in and created unique interactions for nearly every object in the game. And with a hack that allows you to kill every single enemy, I got curious as to what an optimal speedrun might look like. When I contemplate the idea, it feels like running in and taking out a handful of bombs and Goombas in each stage, but I started to realize just how many forms of life exist in Mario 64. Wait, can you destroy the swamps? Hold on. What about these guys? These are enemies too. They all, they, these guys have names. Oh yeah, okay, hold up. My mission was incomplete. There's swamps and bombs and bills and hills and eyes on guys who are still alive. Here's the full list of enemies by our count. This video will break it down each stage and if we missed anything, please let us know. And as well, like and subscribe for projects similar to this one. The game starts with the tutorial section, which I'll also use to demonstrate the controls really quickly. In this camera view, Mario will always shoot directly in front of him. The reticle view allows you to aim independently of Mario, and if you are in the air at all, Mario will always shoot directly below, which gains you some height as well. But far after learning how to do the intro quickly, it came to my attention that you could actually skip the intro. This route will be collecting 15 stars for two reasons. Big Boo's Haunt unlocks at 12, and Mips appears at 15. The first stage is B.O.B. This level is unique in this run because you have to visit this stage three times. The only enemy I go for on the first visit is the Bomb King. But it's the second visit where the routing gets a bit more complex. You cannot kill this guy. This is kind of cool with the Cooper race going on at the same time. Damn, you suck. <laughs> the other stages will be much easier to route. This one's convoluted. One of the only stages where additional enemies spawn. If you look at the stage from this perspective and divide it along this line where the small Koopa spawns, it creates clear boundaries for which enemies to go after during the Cooper race. But it's not enough to just beat every enemy and then finish the Cooper race. You actually want to complete the race early so that he goes faster. The timings for everything in this stage work out really well, and we also decided to get these three cannonballs down here because one, they don't respawn, and two, this third one here does not appear until you kill the bomb Mom king, so take that for what you will. Okay, so where are we at right now? I'm going in to kill nine Goombas, one Koopa. Hang on. The next stage is Womp's Fortress. This is a stage that I think has a lot of potential in a run. I think my routing here could use a bit of improvement. Four shots per Swamp takes some time, and I chose to wait. Pretty hard to see what you're doing and shoot up there at the same time. This guy having four health is awesome. But if you didn't wait, and you kept Mario moving the entire time, you would essentially be looking backwards while shooting the Swamp, and I believe overall that should be several seconds faster. The Bullet Bill and Bullet Bill Blaster does not spawn until star number 2, and the second entry here is purely for the Bullet Bill. The next stage is JRB featuring close to no enemies, but it does feature this cinematic shot. Wait, maybe you can. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa! We quickly exit after getting the other three Goombas here and head to CCM, which features five Spin Drifts and three Snowmen. First thing first, I should spawn the Big Penguin and see what's up. Are you killable? What about at the end? Are you different in any way? The penguin on the slide cannot be destroyed, but the mother penguin down here can. The baby penguins are a sacred entity that cannot be destroyed. Okay, so there is actually one up here. What the, in the world? What an easter egg. Alright, well you don't kill those. Attempting to harm one of them sends you flying backward and forces you to exit the stage. What they didn't know is that it's possible to use this to skip the star collect cutscene. Next is Dark World, featuring 6 Goombas and 5 Amps. The shotgun allows for some very cool routing for the 8 red coin star. It is possible to get unlucky and have one of these Goombas spawn out of bounds, which would force you to have to reload the area. The Bowser fight is now very complex. The Vanish Cap stage is next and it features 8 Flame Chomps and 1 Amp. These flame chomp guys are littered in the most random places of this game. And the vanish cap here is collected for the Mr. Eye behind the fake wall in BBH. Up next is Shifting Sandland. I found out that if you held a specific up left angle when entering the stage and use the non reticle cam, you will always get the shy guy and the crazy box at the beginning. The stage is gonna suck. This is my favorite stage of the run, featuring a massive list of enemies and a boss. True. You're right. I died up there. Dude, this level is easy as hell. You just run through and shotgun and everything. Keeping Mario moving at all times while shooting things is extremely fun. The inside of the pyramid features some enemies you'll never see again, but they're extremely unique. This guy is a Grindle who takes four shots to destroy. And this guy is a Spindle who takes four hits to own as well. These two have never been destroyable before. The hand boss, in my opinion, is usually pretty boring. So the one hit kills here are a massive quality of life upgrade. 
Lethal Lava Land contains 12 bullies, two eyes, and a box. Oh, hell yeah. Two of the bullies are in the volcano, and the stage is pretty straightforward. Hazy Maze Cave is a difficult level to do well. It is not possible to kill Dory, as that would betray the peace treaty. Making this noise, Dory is friend. Oh, that's actually wholesome as hell. It won't let you shoot Dory. But it is possible to fully get rid of the Mani Mole. These moles are permanently killable. That's not normal. Okay, that just made TTM harder as well. Wait, is this mole dead too? Oh my god, it's the same Mani Mole that goes in between the holes. That, that's lore, dude. Outside of that, this stage contains 11 bats, 6 scuttlebugs, 4 snuffets, 2 flame chomps, and a pair of eyes. And of course, the stage connects to the metal cap, which has a few enemies as well. This toad only appears after 12 stars have been collected, so we quick scope him and head over to Big Booth Hunt, which is my second favorite stage, feeling very similar to Doom or Duke Nukem. The stage requires two visits, as the five ghosts on the bottom only appear during star number two. Dude, this is what aimbotters look like in Counter Strike. This is so funny. And the piano that scared you as a kid is killable in this. Oh, the piano. Okay, well that's on the list. As well as the coffins. I've decided that the coffins are in fact enemies because they do show aggression towards Mario. And the second visit to the stage is very straightforward. And this courtyard area contains the rest of the enemies in the castle except for one, Mips. He doesn't appear until 15 stars have been collected. He's pretty much the only reason we collect any stars during this run. I've had dreams that feel like this. DDD contains two sharks, two fish, and a flame chomp. Dude, people are gonna appreciate that I remembered to kill that guy. I, they actually really will. It is not possible to kill the manta ray. Really? All right, fair enough. Nothing too special about this level. Fire Sea remains linear, but still contains 11 enemies on the way to Bowser. This Bowser fight is, again, insanely complex. Wet Dry World is probably my third favorite stage, featuring a ton of enemies. Dude, movement shooters are fun. Who would've thunk? The routing here is very cool, difficult long range shots, and the underwater section is very fun. There's not much going on with the other water stages, but this one allows you to properly aim and swim. Up next is Tiny Huge Island. Look at this massive enemy list. Nintendo really started putting these everywhere in the later levels, huh? It is not possible to kill the Koopa here. Knocking him out of bounds will only make him more determined, as he'll eventually find his way to the goal. This stage is very fun and very intimidating. The small island section is cramped with 17 enemies. It's extremely chaotic, and this one also ends with a boss fight. Uh, wait, wait, what are your thoughts on this? Up next is TTM, which does not differ that much from running up the stage linear. That's unbelievable. It contains 23 enemies. It's pretty straightforward. And we run a second quick revisit for the other monkey. Hi, I'm tall. Snowman's Land is awesome. The only level featuring a shell to be used for this. It is also possible to kill the penguin at the top of this stage. The entire stage can be completed in about a minute. Up next is TikTok Clock, which is pretty similar to running up the stage normally. There's only eight enemies here. However, nearly every single mechanical part here is destructible. Whoa, that is really cool. That is so done well. Way too cool. Just a very cool part of the hack. Rainbow Ride is a very fun one. The shotgun completely breaks this stage. Only 13 enemies for this one. Oh my god, I have the coolest route idea ever. Let me see if you can get the check here without having to open the cannon though. No way. Okay, the route's pretty fire, I think. I couldn't find a way to skip the cannon, but it might be possible. Regardless, this is the coolest cannon shot of all time. As Mario's journey comes to an end, the lives he took weigh on him greater than anything. Mario reflects on the time he turned the Mushroom Kingdom into the Mushroom Cloud. He faces one final, extremely technical boss. Why that look like I've done it a million times before? Right? <laughs> The time of this run was 37 minutes, 30 seconds, and is available without commentary in the description. Before this video concludes, please support the creator of this hack. After Dan put so much time and love into this project, Nintendo thanked him, not just by taking down the release video, but also 10 of his other videos. It's an injustice. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, because we'll definitely be making more unique videos like this. Thank you.